Sugar, the sweet crystalline treasure we all know and love, has a remarkable history that spans thousands of years. Its story begins in distant lands, where sugarcane, the source of this delectable delight, was first cultivated. Sugarcane, native to Southeast Asia and the South Pacific, has been cultivated for over 6,000 years. Early civilizations, including the Indians and Chinese, discovered the sweet juice within these canes, which would become the basis for one of the world's most beloved commodities. As centuries passed, the art of sugar making found its way to the Middle East, thanks to Arab traders who brought sugar from India. There, it was refined into the granulated sugar we recognize today. By the 12th century, sugar had made its way to Europe, where it became a rare luxury item available only to the wealthiest individuals. In fact, sugar was once referred to as white gold due to its high value. Fast forward to the present day, and sugar has become an integral part of our lives. But did you know that most of the sugar we consume today actually comes from sugar beets? Roughly 45% of all sugar consumption actually comes from beets and not sugarcane. Sugar beets, unlike sugarcane, are grown in temperate climates like Brazil, China, and the United States. These unassuming root vegetables pack a surprising amount of sweetness within their fleshy tubers. The process of extracting sugar from sugar beets is quite similar to that of sugarcane. After harvesting the beets, they are cleaned, sliced, and then subjected to a diffusion process to extract their sugar content. The extracted sugar-rich juice is then purifying, concentrated, and crystallized, just like in the sugarcane process. But what exactly is that process? Our journey continues at the sugar mill where the sugar-making process comes to life. We have all wondered how the sugar that sweetens our lives is made. Enter into the world of sugar production. Our sugary adventure begins in the sugarcane fields, where skilled workers harvest the tall, bamboo-like stalks of sugarcane. Sugarcane, a tropical crop, thrives in warm climates with abundant rainfall. It can reach heights of 20 feet or more, making it a towering presence in the fields. As sugarcane matures, it accumulates sucrose, the sweet substance we seek. The ideal time for harvesting is when the sugar content is at its peak. Once harvested, the sugar cane is transported to the sugar mill, where the magic truly begins. At the mill, the sugar cane goes through a series of meticulously designed processes to extract its precious juice. The first step is crushing. Huge rollers press the sugar cane stalks, squeezing out the sweet juice, which is thick, syrupy, and filled with the sugars we crave. Now, let's get to the heart of the matter. How do we separate that sweet juice from everything else? The answer lies in the process of clarification. The extracted juice is laden with impurities like plant material and wax. To purify it, the juice is heated, clarified, and meticulously filtered. The clarification process ensures that we're left with a clean, sweet liquid ready for the next stage of transformation. Next up, it's time for evaporation. The clear juice is boiled down to concentrate the sugar content. As the water evaporates, sugar crystals begin to form. The juice is heated in large evaporators, causing water to evaporate and sugar molecules to come together. What remains is a thick, syrup-like liquid filled with sugar crystals. As the mixture cools, these sugar crystals grow in size. The result, beautiful sugar crystals forming before your eyes. But we're not quite there yet. These crystals need to be separated from the remaining liquid, known as molasses. How do we do that? Centrifuges come to the rescue. These high-speed machines spin the crystals, separating them from the molasses. The centrifugal force is so powerful that it flings the molasses away, leaving us with raw sugar. Raw sugar, although sweet, still has some impurities and a tang color. To create the pure, white sugar we're familiar with, it undergoes for the refinement. The refinement process involves dissolving the raw sugar in water, purifying it through carbon filters, and then allowing it to recrystallize. During recrystallization, sugar crystals are encouraged to grow in size, and any remaining impurities are removed. The result is the pristine, white granulated sugar we find in our kitchens. But what happens to the molasses that's separated from the raw sugar? Well, molasses, a byproduct of the sugar making process, has its own uses. It can be used to make rum, as a sweetener in baking, or even as livestock feed. But did you know that sugar isn't just a sweet treat? It's also big business, which means big money, lots of jobs and trade across many countries. In the United States, sugar brings in roughly 23 billion a year, Mexico 2.3 billion, and Europe bringing in 13 billion. The sugar industry is a global powerhouse, contributing billions of dollars to economies worldwide. It's one of the most widely traded commodities, with millions of tons exchanged annually. Countries like Brazil, India, and the United States are among the top sugar producers, reaping the economic benefits of this sweet industry.
sugar's economic impact isn't limited to just production. It fuels employment and innovation across the globe. So, next time you savor a sweet treat, remember that it's not just satisfying your taste buds, it's also contributing to the sugar industry's sweet success. Thanks for joining us on this sugar-coated adventure. If this video has you interested, watch this next one on how chocolate is made.